In the last section, we asked the question, well, what happens if our y value grows arbitrarily large? In this section, we're asking the question, well, what happens if our x value grows arbitrarily large? So we're starting off with a definition here um, for limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. It says, if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a finite number l, so here we're just approaching some finite number l, for all sufficiently large and positive x, then we say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l. And in this case, we would call the line y equals l a horizontal asymptote, which hopefully is a term that you remember from college algebra or a previous math class. If you wanted to look at limits at negative infinity, it's defined very similarly. You just add the word negative in there. So we're going to look at a couple of quick examples here to start off. For this first example here, I have the limit as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity of negative 4 plus 1 over x. And here I've graphed this function over here on the right-hand side. So when I say x approaches positive infinity, first of all, you think about on your number line, right? Here is x equals 5, then you'd expect x equals 10 over here, and so on. Then you'd get to, you know, 15 and 20. I want to know what happens if x approaches positive infinity. And so where is positive infinity? That, that's basically as far as you can go to the right. So you want to ask yourself, well, if I were to trace my function as far to the right as I can, if I were to draw on this graph right here and I say, okay, if I go as far to the right as I possibly can, what y value am I approaching, if any? I may not be approaching any y value. But in this case here, if I move as far to the right as I possibly can, it looks like I'm approaching here. I have a horizontal asymptote, and I didn't do a great job of drawing that in. Let's see if I can do a little bit better. That's better. Looks like I'm approaching that horizontal asymptote, that y value of negative 4. So I would say that this limit is equal to negative 4. Now be careful with horizontal asymptotes in general. Uh, if you approach positive infinity and negative infinity, you will never reach that horizontal asymptote. So my function right here, this red line, uh, this guy, let's see if I can try this, this guy right here, he's going to get closer and closer and closer to that blue dotted line. He's never actually going to reach that blue dotted line. It's just going to get closer and closer and closer, infinitely close there. Similarly, as x approaches negative infinity, we're really just looking at the other side over there. So let's do this one in black over here. So this time I'm saying, okay, as I move as far to the right, excuse me, as far to the left as I possibly can. So this time I'm saying, okay, if I move as far to the left, where's my function going? What y value am I approaching right there? And again, it looks like it's approaching this blue dash line right here of y equals negative 4. So it looks like, oops, it looks like our function is also approaching negative 4. So that's really all there is to limits at infinity. If, if we're looking at the graph of them, we're just looking at, okay, if I move as far to the right or as far to the left as I possibly can, what's happening to our y value? Is it approaching some finite value or perhaps something else? One more quick example here. Here I've got 2 minus cosine of x all over x squared. Here again, this is, um, we want to look at the limit as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. So let's start with positive infinity once again. And again, hopefully we look at this, we say, boy, it looks like it's approaching this uh, vertical, or excuse me, this horizontal line, that blue horizontal line of uh, y equals 2. So as I go as far to the right as I can, so if I were to trace my function, if I was to go as far to the right as I possibly can, here that red line is converging closer and closer to that blue line. That blue line has a y value of positive 2 this time. Same thing is happening if I look at the other side as well. If I go to the left this time, so this time as I go as far to the left as I possibly can, here in this case, we're converging, we're getting closer and closer and closer to that blue line. So in this case, we would say, okay, this guy here is 
uh, positive 2 as well. So next we want to talk about well, what happens if we don't converge to a finite number. So here in this case, if f of x becomes arbitrarily large as x becomes arbitrarily large, then in that case, both my x value and my y value are approaching infinity. So this time as x approaches infinity, then the y value will also approach positive infinity as well. If you want to look at the definitions for here, this is x approaches positive infinity, y value approaches negative infinity. Here, x value is approaching negative infinity, y value is approaching positive infinity. And then here, they're both approaching negative infinity. I'm not going to give every single one of those definitions. They're all pretty much the same. And so what I want to do here is I want to work through some, some very basic functions, some functions that we should hopefully uh, kind of know and understand the shape of, just so that we can sort of get a feel for these and start to look at them. Um, because in the next section, we're going to see if we can sort of generalize some of these rules so that when we start to look at limits as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity of a polynomial, it becomes a whole lot easier for us to do. So we're going to start with x squared here. Let's look at this guy here. We'll do this part in blue. I would encourage you to think about the graph of y equals x squared. If I was to graph this guy out here, I have a parabola. It looks something like that. It's not perfect, but we get the idea. So here in part a, as x approaches positive infinity, I say, OK, what's happening if I move to the right? Where is my y value going? Well, in this case, if I start at zero and I just go as far to the right as I possibly can, in this case it's going up and up and up forever, so looks like this limit would approach positive infinity. And if I wanted to go in the other direction, maybe we'll do this guy in red here. If I was to go to the left, I want to say, okay, what happens if I go as far to the left as I possibly can this time? So here I'm going as far to the left, and this time my y value still going up and up and up. So in this case, we would say that this limit is also positive infinity on both sides here. So here we had y equals x cubed. Next up, we've got y, or excuse me, this was y equals x squared. I was looking ahead. Next up, we've got y equals x cubed. So here, our y equals x cubed graph should look something like this. Here, y equals x to the third power. And again, I want to look at the limit as x approaches positive infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So let's start with positive infinity here. This time, as I move as far to the right as I can, where is my y value going? Well, it looks like it's going up, 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 forever it's increasing. So we would say that this limit is positive infinity. If I look at part d here, though, this time as x approaches negative infinity, so this time as I approach negative infinity, so as I move as far to the left as I possibly can, now this value is growing arbitrarily large in the negative direction this time. So if we say, okay, it's growing arbitrarily large in the negative direction, in this case it's going to negative infinity rather than positive infinity. If you want a shortcut, really the question you're asking yourself is, is the arrow pointing up or is the arrow pointing down in these cases? That's really all I'm looking for. Um, because, well, I shouldn't say uh, all of them. Most of these, if you're, if you're working with polynomial functions, polynomial functions will generally um, diverge to either positive infinity or negative infinity, just sort of depending on the particular polynomial that you're looking at here. E and F, well, here we have y equals x to the fourth. It's called a quartic function. Here, if I wanted to graph that, I'm just going to do a really rough sketch of it. It actually looks like the graph of y equals x squared, just a little bit skinnier, just a little bit narrower. But the overall behavior of this graph is pretty much the same. So when it comes to talking about this function here, as x approaches positive infinity and negative infinity, I want to look at both sides of my graph. If I move to the left here, in this case, my arrow is pointing up, my function's going up, so this is going to positive infinity here. And on the left-hand side, as I go up, 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 
as I move to the left, my y value is increasing here in this case as I move to the left. So my, uh, my limit in this case is also positive infinity. We can just look at the both arrows. Both arrows are pointing up. For these last couple of functions here, these are technically not polynomials. These, these are rational functions technically here. I've got 1 over x and 1 over x squared. So hopefully we remember what those look like. But if not, we'll sketch those on here real quick. So 1 over x looks something like, oops, something like this. Oops. Let's see if I can do a better job there. There we go. That's pretty good. So this time, something something different is happening. So let's look at the right-hand behavior first. So this time, as I approach positive infinity for my x direction, now my arrow isn't just pointing almost directly up, right? This point right here, this blue function, looks like it's getting closer and closer and closer to this line right here, the x-axis. So okay, what, what y value are we getting closer and closer and closer to? In this case, we're getting closer and closer to y equals 0 here. Same story on the left-hand side. We're just approaching it from the other side of the x-axis. So as I move towards x equals negative infinity, as I move as far to the left as my function will let me go, again, we're getting closer and closer and closer to uh, this dash line right here. We're getting closer and closer to the x-axis, which means that this limit has a value of 0. i and j very similarly uh, 1 over x squared. I'm kind of out of room. Actually, I got a little bit here. Let's see. 1 over x squared. Not quite as famous as the reciprocal function, but it looks something like this. And again, hopefully you look at that and you say, as we approach both positive and negative infinity, maybe we notice that horizontal asymptote right there. So as x approaches positive infinity, my y value is getting closer and closer to that red dash line, the x-axis. It's getting closer and closer to a y value of 0 here. And then for the left-hand side over here as I move as far to the left as I possibly can here. My function, my y value, is converging to that red dash line on the x-axis, which means it also converges to 0 here. So in the next video, we're going to see and we're going to generalize um, some of these limits at infinity. How can we speed up this process without having to look at our function every single time and we'll talk about methods that we can use that'll make our lives just a little bit easier going forward when it comes to computing limits at infinity.